say that it feels right All right, guys, so we just got back from the junkyard. Um, we got all this for $100. We got a, a disc. We got two discs. A bit rusty, but we can always fix that. We got two big uh, calipers from uh, One Point Atero, which is a GTI. There's hubs with the spindle. What, what, what do you need? What? Screwdriver. Screwdriver. All right. Uh, this this is for another project. You'll be seeing that turbo um, from uh, Volkswagen. It's a KK3, so you'll be seeing that probably pretty soon. Coming on the channel. Uh, we also got check that out. That'll be for another video too. All right, so we got a. I'm gonna have to clean these up. Make them look good. Then after cleaning them up, um, we're gonna paint them. Actually, I got some paint from um, AutoZone. It was like eight bucks, so uh, it better be some good stuff here. Uh -huh. Caliper, caliper paint right here. Red. Nine hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. But first, we gotta. Make sure they're all clean and good before we actually do all this crap. So we got some wire wheels here. I'm wiring the uh, there it goes. It's gonna take a long time, but we're making it really good. Alright guys, looking back into the channel. Kyrie the gamer here, so today we're changing brick calipers, hub, whatever. I so we're doing this car, we're putting the GTI brakes, which uh, I read somewhere it comes from an LTT. I don't know if it's right or wrong, whatever. But um, so Volkswagen Golf GTI brakes on a normal 2.0. Why? Because I tracked this car. Well, I autocross it, don't track it, but I will start to track it probably this summer. Well, it's summer, but like in June, July, there's a race. I want to really go track event. These do the job. Actually, they, okay, they stop. They stop, but they don't, once they heat up, they just take a long time to stop. And an autocross is not even that long, and they don't even stop that good. Like, they'll stop for an emergency situation, yeah, but... It doesn't even lock up the tires. I, I will show you guys the video clip I took when I, I was going 40, 50, and I slammed the brakes. And um, that says it, the car, the ABS light is on, so the ABS doesn't work. Um, it didn't. It didn't even lock up the tires. It's not even strong enough to lock up the tires. But all right, let's just go. Shiny, I like it. Like it, like it. Look good, look good. Oh, those are over there. Look good. Um, all this at the junkyard. Uh, brick calipers, brick pads were a dollar each. Uh, rotors and hubs. Yeah, hubs, rotors, pads, and um, calipers were about a hundred and forty dollars. It's a lot better than paying a thousand dollars for like not for the calipers you can get them on eBay for like a hundred and fifty dollars, but that's just the calipers. You still have to buy rotors. There are no vented crap, but um I just wanted something that would do the job for now. So I'm like, like that will work for now, so I'm good with that. Once I get into it and get the good pads, I'll buy uh, good rotors and pads, but that's good for now. Alright okay, guys, first to remove the hub, how my, uh, I have aftermarket rams in my hub, my inner piece comes out, like mine's, uh, mine is already out, so uh, instead of uh, having a two process thing, which is usually what happens, um, you need to call your friend or somebody to come and step on the pedal, on the brake, so 
thing doesn't move when it's up in the air. I have a better eye, I, idea right here. So, my hub thing is already out. Like, the protector hub is already out. So just get your a 30 millimeter, 12 star socket. Fits right in there. All right? Get that. Just loosen it. Don't take it out all the way. Just loosen it. Dude, it's good enough. Then, um, then, you know, just disassemble everything else. Now, I use this, uh, this, right? Check this out. It's bent from the, from the hub. Because I was hopping on it, so, um, whatever. I'm going to try to hit it with my impact gun. That was at the junkyard, so I don't know if my impact gun is strong enough, but let's give it a try. She's out. Wow. Impact gun made that thing so easy. This, using this, took me a good, uh, good 30 minutes. Well, here they are. I got that wheel thingy crap. Um, I don't know how to take this out, but these are definitely smaller. Um, yeah, they're going to be kind of hard, but, um, uh, we'll figure this out. There it is. That's the old one. That's the new one. It's bigger. Not, not, not by much, but it's more bigger. So, she, she looks good, though. All right, there's a bolt right on, right behind here. I already loosened it, but... That's it right there. That will be loose, and there's one on the bottom too. Let me just get that in there. That. Just get that. There we go. That's loosened too. Let's get those two. This one back here, and that one. And before we take it out, let's remove the brake line too. Just so you know, if you work if you work on cars or something, having saran wrap will do is almost gone. But this is a good like inch thick. Um, this you can get on online, um, or just put it on like this works if you put it on the ground if you know there's grease or something and it's big strips so pretty good you know just just a tip they're kind of cheap too so you should pick one up. Okay, and after that you want to unhook the brake line from the caliper. It's <clears throat> pretty good. Come on. No. Okay. Let me just get this good. There you go, Tim. Okay. Well, she's loose. She just, it's just, you know, hard, I guess. I don't like to kink the lines because they're hard rubber. Kinking hard rubber is not smart at all, so. I'm just going to let it drip, I guess. All right, there she is. I just put the brake line up there. Just, ah, it's fine. That's good enough. Alright, this has leaked all this fluid, and now let's loosen it, just those two bolts are more loose in there, it should, should be out. Here's the disc, which is in sort of bad shape. And then here's the hub. Uncle nut. Next thing, next thing you have to do is take off the uh, wheel, uh, the the thing, um, the bolt that's holding in the strut. It's an 18 mil. Should get one on the other side, but it's not spinning right now. So okay, let me get up uh, something here. Ah. 
Just a precaution. Get that on there. Mm hmm. Yep. Just, uh, I don't know, get probably something longer. That might work. No problem. Uh, there she is. Still bleeding, but you know, whatever. So I have to work on cars, I guess. Um, now we need to take out. Uh, ooh, the tie, tie rod, tie rod here, the, well, the steering rack, I guess, tie rod, what am I, um, and the uh, control arm. Alright, so we got the tie rod here. Let's just loosen it. There we go, now that she's loose, we can just put this bag up. Alright, after you're done, uh, make sure you... Hammer it because uh, it needs to slip out. So now that she's sort of loose, you can just uh, put the nut under it and just start giving it. She's finally loose. Now you can take off that uh, nut and she'll be good. If you've ever wondered what it's like when your tie rod snaps, this is this is a tie rod, right? When you're going on the highway, or something. This is normal, right? She snaps. Yeah. Oh, you're going. Goodbye, buddy. Now, I got that. Uh, you need to loosen. There's three right here. You need to loosen one, two, three, and then you can start. Oh, this. I, actually, no, you don't need that. My bad, my bad. Just this, and you'll be good to go. Alright, she's uh, out now, so we should. Okay, I didn't need no actual crap removal. She is dry in there, dude. Oh my gosh, there's rust in there. Is this rust or what is this? I don't know. That's a thing they put. Whatever. Now what we have to do is just move this out the way a little bit. The other side, I guess. Just move it. Just, yeah. Just move it out the way. Now you now you may have to hammer this thing out. But before, oh. Before you do that, I actually have a brake pad sensor in the weird thing. I broke mine off. Um, really doesn't matter. Whatever. I don't need it anyway, so <clears throat> make sure you remove, remove these lines for the brake pad sensor indicator crap. You don't need them if you always check your your brakes, so uh, shouldn't be able to need them. Trying to take off the brake pad indicator sensor. I'm just gonna cut the wire. I, I don't need it. Now, now this is freely loose and you can start hammering. So. There she is. I took off a shield that really is just a shield. It really doesn't do much. Just protects from stuff hitting the. It doesn't matter. It's that's yeah, lighter, so let's do it like that. All right, I'm gonna try to put this right back in, but I don't know if it'll be able to go right back in. How it? I don't know. A bit of hammering, probably. Ah, that's not the proper way. If you use a jack, probably. I just thought about something. Um, my control arm thing is really in bad shape, so I'm like, I'm literally two bolts away from taking it out. Um, they sell them at Summit, and it's dark right now too, but. They sell them at Summit, right? And the control arm bushings is uh, thirty-three dollars for both sides. So I'm like, okay, I'm two steps. I don't know if you can see it because it's dark, but you got one bolt over there and one bolt over here, and the control arm just drops. 
I'm like, I have everything already out. Why not just do the bushings now? And do polyurethane bushings. And I'm like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So, time to take out the control arm, two bolts. So, let's get that going. One thing I just remembered is, make sure you keep this plate. Because to do this conversion, you gotta put the plate roll just like that. And then the bolt go in. The bolt for the uh, control arm is this one right here. There she is, that one up there. And then we also have this one right up there, which actually I kicked it over there, but oh, it's right there. I'm gonna go get that one. That goes right there. These goes back in here. We'll jack it up from here to get that part a tad bit more in, but then uh, don't forget to do the this. Wow, that's, wow, okay. Looks like I'm done doing these. Well, they're not, they're not even tight, they're just hand tightened. So I'm going to un undo them, put the axle in there. There we go, the axle is back in. I just uh, jammed it in there. Just just like took these off and jammed it in there now. Got to tighten these sway bars, tighten those in the back. And the then we start with the brakes and then we should be done. After it's in, I'm getting the uh, high rod, right? Well, it's the steering. I think it's called power rod, I forgot, whatever. And this thing Titan, yeah, this thing's done for, but she'll be fine for now. Alright, so basically, you have to have a star bit, that's a T40, and then an 18 mil to hit it tight. Uh, I'm gonna compress the spring a little bit so I could fit the sway bar on this side. Alright, I got everything done. I'm gonna do this. Just do that. Once the car's on the ground, I'll tighten it more. Just looking. I'm going to show you guys a very simple way on removing these, uh, what, they're bolts? I guess you, you call them. On a European car, we have a lug bolt, not a lug nut. So, what I did is I, I got two nuts, put them in all the, all the way in. Now you twist the one inside back, so then this will stop this one from coming out, so then they'll basically slide out, so that's what I'm going to do for all these five. If it doesn't come out, always add some heat. That will always work. Well, it should always work, sort of. All right, guys, so now we're getting these studs tightened. My size is a 5.5 stud. I don't know how tight I'm going to do it but just tight enough same with all of them alright guys so it turns out because I already was having an issue with rubbing the tire uh, would rub the coal well, would not rub the coal over but would be like a, a centimeter from rubbing the coal over with the old setup I had. So, with this new setup, because these tires are wider and the pr last owner didn't calculate the right offset and the tires were a centimeter from rubbing for the coal over. Which means now with the new brakes, they rub. Because a centimeter, yeah, I guess. Something was not perfectly, a, you know, a, a centimeter off, of course. 
So, every time I spin it, broke another tire in the back. And I'm like, I don't really care, but I do. So I lowered the over a little bit so it's more compressed, higher, still rubs. So I had these laying around, these like, I believe it's a five millimeter spacer, five mil which is the tiniest I have around here and I'm just going to put that in there and hopefully that works out. Alright, there's a spacer. I do have that hub centric thing, so let's put the tire on. Alright guys, it's in. Spacer. Now just take a listen. It rubs right there. So it rubs right here. But right there but nowhere across the stupid wheel so it's one of the stupid letters or stuff that show up is see those are the letters right there it rubs so that's so it basically it's good I might just lower it a tad bit more um, see if that'll fix the rubbing and then repeat the same thing on the other side it's already jacked up and uh here she is. Well, that said, it should be faster because I know what to do now, so that's good. I did find a much easier way, which you use this to go down, and then that holds it from spinning. I'll show you guys right here. Just hit it with the hammer or something, just, and then that will loosen it with the two nuts trick. I showed you guys. And then keep on doing that until it gets loose. 11, 57. It's oh, 11, 57? Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Oh, 18. 18. Oh. Don't mind the chicken nuggets. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is, is there more? I want to have those. <clears throat> All right, so. We're still, well, I'm still out here. I just got here. Yeah. Well, the, I've been here for a the hub now. Well, I can't. You can't see, guys. Let me get some light for you. Got the hub all in. Blah, blah, blah. Listen to studs. Got everything tightened up now. So basically just the studs, oh, the caliper. And I'm actually done.